For the past few years, we as a worldwide church have journeyed with words of counsel that recently became section 165 of the Doctrine and Covenants. In verse 2, A to F, we hear the call to both think more deeply about generosity and to be more generous. The text begins with this principle, free the full capacity of Christ's mission through generosity that imitates God's generosity. This high standard causes me to pause and question just how can I imitate God's generosity? But the text reminds us a basic principle is growing Christ's mission, giving according to true capacity. What is true capacity? What decisions and conditions block us from reaching our true capacity? While these statements may challenge us to think more deeply about generosity, the challenge of the scripture is not over. It goes on to define tithing as a spiritual practice that demonstrates willingness to offer every dimension of one's life to God. The words of section 165.2 articulate a principle-based understanding of generosity that can lead us far in our response to God's grace. Over the past year in our adult Sunday school class, we have been reading and wrestling with the ideas Donald Crabill presents in his book, The Upside Down Kingdom. Crabill writes, the Jubilee was a response to God's gracious liberation and deliverance. As the people recalled how God freed them from slavery, their joyous response was to pass that freedom on by forgiving debts, releasing slaves, and redeeming the land. To our minds, releasing a slave sounds like a noble act, but the Jubilee prescription didn't stop with a self-righteous pat on the back. Simply freeing the slaves wasn't enough. And when you send a male slave out from you as a free person, you shall not send him out empty-handed. Provide liberally out of your flock, out of your threshing floor, and your wine press. Deuteronomy 15, 13. Why such generous mercy? Isn't it enough to free the slave? Why this extra dose of goodness? The biblical refrain is clear. Thus giving to him, the slave, some of the bounty with which the Lord your God has blessed you. As God liberally redeemed you out of Egypt, so you ought to graciously liberate your brothers and sisters. I struggle with how the word bounty might reflect what I might have to give. I've always thought of bounty as extra, but Craybill's ideas, along with the experiences I've had, chip away at this notion. I have a home. I have food to eat every day. I have a support system of family and friends. Our family has several cars to get us from place to place. We have steady jobs. We have bounty. Several years ago, while traveling with our high school youth group, we had the opportunity to visit members of Powerhouse Community of Christ in Baltimore, Maryland. Powerhouse is an amazing congregation filled with people transforming lives in the inner city neighborhood that they serve. I was vividly struck by one woman's story. As she shared about life in that community, multiple times she talked about the opportunities that she had had to move out of the neighborhood and out of the circumstances of poverty. But each opportunity to move also coincided with the arising need of someone else in her family and community. This woman chose again and again to help others, to be generous beyond measure, to give at her own expense to bless the lives of others, she recognized her true bounty. As I work for the church in a large low-income housing complex, time and again, I see this kind of generosity. People willing to give their limited food supplies so others who are hungry can eat. People are willing to give their last $5 for the month to help a neighbor in need. To be generous, to imitate God's generosity calls us to change. To see our true capacity, we have to change how we see ourselves. We have to recognize that our lives are bountiful. We have to get past our fears of tomorrow and share today. 
To imitate God's generosity, we have to move beyond our human measurements of, will I still have enough? Is this person or need worthy of my gift? Or will they use it the way I want them to use it? Verse 2 ends with this simple statement, sharing for the common good is the spirit of Zion. Our lives are bountiful, share. 